This is what he told us in class. Write the story that only you can write. And that's something that I've deeply taken to heart in my own practice of fiction. I first met Franz uh, sometime in, I suppose, the early 80s when I returned to UP as an undergraduate student. I was 27 years old and Franz was probably in his uh, mid to late 60s then. And Franz kind of took me under his wing. He became my thesis advisor for my undergraduate thesis, which I did on the on the work of uh, Boy Noriega. And while I admired many other writers, uh, I often say that the, the Filipino writers whose writing I most admire are uh, people like uh, Bienvenido Santos and Greg Brillantes. It was France whom I actually um, thought of as my literary uh, father maybe because he was the one I worked most closely with. I remember that whenever I had a new story, he was the first person I would show the, the story to, and I would wait outside his door at the faculty center like a, like a puppy, waiting for him to come out and give me his, his comments. And when they were good, and they were often good, it made my day. It came to the point that when the time came for me to come out with my first book of stories in 1984, it was Franz, of course, whom I asked to write the introduction. And he wrote a very generous one in, in longhand on yellow paper, and I still keep that note. It was a very precious memento. Uh, Franz was a very generous person. Uh, and by that I mean not only generous with his ideas, but, but also with his things. He would give me little things like books and pictures, and when he discovered that I, I, I collect fountain pens, he gave me some of his Parkers from the 1950s. In fact, just about a few months ago, I gave one of these back to his son, uh, Joey Arceliana, who also became my friend because uh, the family clearly didn't know that Franz had been so generous with these pens, and so I, I thought that I should at least give one of them back to the family. It was Joey himself who also told me that, you know, uh, you were the literary son that he never did become. I mean, Joey was a terrific writer. He was an editor of the Collegian, and I admired him even in high school. I was in Philippine Science High School where Franz's daughter Mayi was studying and actually that m must have been when I first saw him picking up Mayi uh, from school back in the uh, back in the mid to late 60s but uh, to get back to Joey uh, uh, Joey went on to do other things in computers and multimedia so he never did quite become the kind of writer of fiction that, that Franz was Franz uh, did a lot of things, but he was really basically known for the quality and the uniqueness of his fiction. I think it was Amelia La Peña Bonifacio who once characterized Franz as a poet trapped in fiction, and that was a good description of him. And you can see that in the, in the musicality of, of his stories, again, which I much uh, admired. Stylistically, we're very different in the way we write stories, even in the way we look at life, but Franz recognized that and respected that difference and never tried to make me uh, some kind of clone, even if I was his very attentive and, and willing student. Trilogy of the Turtles The flowers appear on the earth. The time of the singing of birds is come. 
and the voice of the turtle is heard in our land. The Song of Solomon 2.12 The Voice of the Turtle In the afternoon, I waited at the hospital gate. There was a thin, fine rain falling. I shall tell her. I shall tell her with my own voice. I shall tell her. There was the sun shining, and there was the thin, fine rain falling. Under the tall trees, the ground was dry. The rain was too fine and too thin, and the leaves too thick and too close together. I shall tell her. How will she know if I do not tell her? With my own voice, I shall tell her. The sky was very clear. What with the sun shining, what with the rain fine and thinly falling, the air smelled very sweet. I said to myself, you should know. You should know. How can you know if I do not tell you? I said to myself, I shall tell you with my own voice. In the sun and the rain, my voice sounded strange to my ears. My voice sounded like the voice of the turtle. My voice is all right, I shall tell her. With my voice, I shall tell her. In the sun and the rain, with my voice, I shall tell her. Then, through the rain, I saw her. The sun very clearly showed her. She was walking. She was walking as if to a song. The thing about him was that um, uh, when he spoke to you, especially during his last years, it was like going to the oracle at Delphi and uh, he spoke to you in short mysterious statements that you then had to figure out and I'm never sure that that, that, that I did. What is real and which is the fiction? That's how a life of fiction. Yeah. I'm actually suggesting that that uh, for all I know, the life of fiction that I've been living is unreal. <laughs> of course, when he died, uh, I, I was deeply sad. I remember seeing him walking uh, near the UP stud farm once, just in his uh, in his T-shirt, and and it was raining. And if I had been driving the car, I would have stopped to pick him up. But but from what I heard, he he kind of liked to do that to to walk a lot, so I didn't bother disturbing him. Um, a very complicated man in, uh, in many ways. Uh, his catchphrases, which uh, I most remember, most people will remember what he would keep telling workshoppers, for example, uh, which was, get real. The, the most useful bit of advice I ever, I ever got from friends is something that I keep passing on to my students. And this is what he told us in class. Write the story that only you can write. And that's something that I've deeply taken to heart in my own practice of fiction. Naniniwala ako na ang mahalagang papel ng artista ng bayan sa anumang panahon ay ang muli muling ipaalala sa atin ang kahulugan ng pagiging Pilipino. Ang lagit laging ipagbunyi ang kagitingan at dangal ng Pilipino. Mabuhay ang Pilipino. Thank you.